Americans were torn over U.S. involvement in another war. They were reluctant to send their boys off to die in foreign lands. I just knew that war was crazy. So I, while I was in high school, I decided that we can't have another war. In fact, I even considered myself a, a pacifist. Francis may not have believed in war, but world events and his own strong personal convictions would eventually place him in a military uniform. After Hitler invaded Poland, it became a fait accompli. I said, oh boy, this is getting serious now. So grad it didn't take me very long to change my tune. My whole idea, my whole perspective went from being a uh, pacifist to being one who's ready to go in and fight. I was, I, was, I was ready to go over there and become a mercenary, so to speak, but I was still kind of young, you know. In 1939, I was 19 years old. We knew it was inevitable, and, and I knew it was, and I accepted the fact that we were born. The following year, Francis taught recruits at Aberdeen, Maryland, but it still wasn't enough. Almost a year after the day that I went down to Aberdeen, I walked into the company clerk's office and I looked on the bulletin board. I was just checking over to see what they were advertising up there. And I saw uh, an announcement that they were looking for volunteers for parachute duty. This would be the second time Francis volunteered within the U.S. Armed Forces. I looked at the company clerk. I said, sign me up. I want to go. And he looked at me. He said, Lamoureux, are you crazy? You want to leave this spot? We were, this was a country club, you know. We were living the life of Riley at Aberdeen. I said, no, I want to become a paratrooper. He spent four intense weeks at Fort Benning, Georgia, under the auspices of then Major Lou Mendez. After the third or fourth day, I could hardly move. I thought I was an old man. I, thought, <laughs> I felt like I didn't have a muscle left in my body. I was creaking. It was absolute agony just to get out of bed and to go through it. But of course, some of the guys were just drop. They were dropping like flies. It was too much for them. They couldn't take it. They were going, they were going bananas. They said, "This is too much." This is. They said, "This is what I came in the army for." I said, "This is what I came in for. I wanted to learn how to how to become a soldier, how to become a paratrooper, to get in there fighting tough, get toughened up." On June 5, 1944, Francis and 17 other paratroopers would conduct a midnight drop into Normandy setting up beacons for two large waves of airborne attacks. They were called the Pathfinders. The Pathfinders commenced jumping into a moonlit sky filled with the hostile tracers of German ground fire. As soon as I hit the air, I felt the opening shock. Didn't feel any worse. I thought it was going to be pretty bad because of the, all the extra equipment we had on. I went into a nice, easy oscillation. And I kept looking around in the darkness, and by the time I got to the fifth oscillation, I was on the ground, right in the middle of an apple orchard. Apple trees all around us, right in the middle. Francis reached the ground relatively unscathed. So of the 18 men that were in our stick, only nine of us ever got together on that, in that, on that drop zone. 60 years has not dimmed the memories of Francis's fellow men of the silk I never go to bed at night, or I never go to church without praying for every damn one of those guys I knew that were killed. And I, I go right through the, the names of every one of them. Someday I'm gonna to have to write this down. The first guy I pray for is Ralph Nicholson. When he jumped out of the plane, as soon as the chute opened, he was hit by Germans, small arms fire. He was dead before he hit the ground. He blew up, he was carrying a landmine. So I pray for Ralph Nicholson, always the first one. Then I played for our first sergeant, Marshal Wendell, who was killed on the 9th of June. He was the first man in G Company that was killed in Normandy. Then I played for our, our chaplain, Father Ignatius Madanowski. He was a Franciscan. He was killed on the 13th of June. And I prayed for Gene Williams. He was the head of our Pathfinder team, and he was killed on, on June 20th in Prato. Then I prayed for Chapinski, who was the, at the end of the stick. He was a, they were the two officers. Then I pray for Ole Majors from California, one of my good buddies. Then I pray for Bill Medford, killed on the horse of fire, my good buddy. Then I pray for Art Rashon. Then I pray for Walter Harrelson, he was on the Pathfinder team. Then I pray for Gladwin L. Roberts, he was in G Company. 
he, he was had his head blown off on his birthday. Then I play for Charlie Rogers. He was on our Pathfinder team. He was killed in Holland. Then I play for Ed Trubolowski. He was our first sergeant killed in Holland. Then I play for Renal Como. He was the communication sergeant killed with Trubolowski in Holland. Then I play for Wayne Couch, Captain Bill Nation, and then for George Bernard Levin. It may have taken 56 years, but because of a series of events, which began with being interviewed for Patrick O'Donnell's book, Beyond Valor, World War II's Ranger and Airborne Veterans Reveal the Heart of Combat. Francis M. Lamoureux, 508 Parachute Infantry Regiment. Colonel Mendez, if you will please present the award. Francis Lamoureux finally received his belated bronze star from none other than his commanding officer from the 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment, Colonel Lou Mendez. Francis had always said he wouldn't accept a bronze star unless his commanding officer pinned it on him. His wish was finally granted.